Straight ahead on CCX News, from January raw to January thaw, we present a tale of two weather extremes. Plus, gathering feedback on what's supposed to be a new destination park. And later. So the Wienermobile is 27 feet long, which of course equates to 50 hot dogs long. An American icon on wheels served up in Brooklyn Park. CCX News starts right now. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Alexandra Renslow. Mike Johnson is off. After a bitter cold snap, Northwest Metro residents finally got some good news. Temperatures are on their way up. We sent reporter Eric Nelson out and he found moods have changed considerably. Year to date, so seven days in, we're 13 degrees below normal. After two weeks of North Pole-like weather, the heat is on. Today, the sun popped out and the thermometer went up. This January thaw even created some puddles. And the car wash became a trendy spot. By Wednesday, temps could be downright balmy. And we think that quite a few locations, especially across the southern and eastern part of the state, are going to get into the 40s. Today is the first day of 2018. We've gone above freezing. And that means a lot of people have come out of hibernation, including the ice skaters. At Maple Grove Central Park, the ice ribbon was a popular place. Skaters of all ages took advantage of a mild winter day. Really couldn't come here very often when it was uh, 20 below. But, you know, it's great now. It hasn't been this warm since July. No. <laughs> Some of the skaters even worked up a sweat and were a tad bit overdressed. Oh yeah, I could have my Speedo on out here. <laughs> warm temps won't last long, however. By Thursday, we hop back on the weather roller coaster as the forecast calls for possible ice and snow. So we're going to probably see a wintry mix to start off, uh, maybe a little bit of a light freezing drizzle um, and sleet, and, but then we think it's going to switch over to snow. More snow would actually be a good thing because there isn't much of the white stuff so far. So far this winter, we've only had seven inches of snow, a little over seven inches at the Minneapolis airport. Uh, normally we should be at about 24 and a half. In Maple Grove, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. According to the National Weather Service, the frigid cold returns on Thursday. Temperatures won't go above freezing from that day until the early part of next week. The Brooklyn Park City Council will get an update this week on plans to overhaul County Road 81. Last fall, the public got its first glimpse of the proposed 81 reconstruction project between 71st and 83rd Avenues. The one and a half mile stretch will be expanded from four lanes to six. The project includes improved intersection operations, improved railroad crossings, and safer pedestrian access. Detailed design work begins this month with construction expected to begin next year. Park developers want your input on the future of the newly renamed Mississippi Gateway Regional Park. Three Rivers Park District and Brooklyn Park are partnering together to design a master plan for two parks that now are under the same name at the Coon Rapids Dam. After getting public input, developers have a master plan for the park, which includes new features like a tree canopy walk, picnic space, and also outdoor classrooms. But the plan is not final yet, and there are opportunities this week to give feedback. A master plan sets the vision of where this park is going to go and that hasn't happened for this park in 40 years so I'm very excited that now we've got a new vision for it and it's going to be the, a beautiful park that our entire community will enjoy. The public is invited to an open house at Brooklyn Park's Community Activity Center on Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. You can also go to the Three Rivers Park District website to view the master plan and give feedback there. Osseo Area Schools is hiring a new superintendent and they also want feedback from the community on who would be the ideal candidate. A series of community meetings begins this week starting with Wednesday night at Park Center High School and it continues throughout January. Input gathered between now and January 25th will help guide the school board in the nationwide search for the next superintendent to replace retiring superintendent Kate McGuire. Choosing a new superintendent is one of the most important things a school board will ever do. This is the leader of a very large and complex organization and we want to make absolutely sure we can find the best person possible. 
The Osseo School Board hopes to have candidates selected by April so the person could be on the job by July 1st. A Plymouth restaurant could have to remove all alcohol products from its premises by the end of the month after failing another compliance check. Barwachi Indian Cuisine sold beer to a minor last month. The minor was with an undercover police officer. It was the fourth violation in a three-year span. The penalty for a fourth violation is usually liquor license revocation. The Plymouth City Council will determine punishment at its Tuesday meeting. Well, many of us have a lot of stuff, particularly as we age, and there's not a lot of room for it. It's why there's a self-storage boom. That includes a project in Maple Grove to help meet the demand. A Corcoran business owner is seeking approval to build a four-story, 114,000 square foot self-storage facility near I-494 and Bass Lake Road. The Maple Grove Planning Commission gets its first look at the project this week. You might remember last year, the Maple Grove City Council voted against a different self-storage project that involved tearing down a vacant IHOP restaurant. At the time, some council members felt that proposed building was just too big. A newly renovated bowling alley celebrated its grand opening over the weekend with a big party. We want to be the place in Brooklyn Park for families to come. We've been here for so long and that's why we did this refresh. We wanted to do it so the community has a place that they can con con continue to come in and just enjoy themselves. Um, I think Brooklyn Park has been so supportive of us and this grand opening is just us paying it back to them. Hundreds made their way to the newly renamed Bolero Bowling Alley in Brooklyn Park Saturday morning. Families enjoyed free bowling and other activities as part of the celebration for the renovated building. Former Minnesota Viking and Pittsburgh Steelers player Tyrone Carter was there for the fun as well. Carter played in two Super Bowls with Pittsburgh and he said he likes the Vikings' chances to make the big game. One game at a time, man. I like the direction they're going. I like the mood the team is in and the close fit the team is in. And that right there creates championship to me. Bolero now has four locations in Minnesota. Meanwhile, the Vikings play New Orleans on Sunday at 3.40 in the afternoon. Still ahead, there is a new point person in Plymouth to attract businesses to the city. That's next in Business Matters. Plus, the area's top gymnastics teams see how they match up with Minnesota's best at a big meet in Brooklyn Park. But first, savor that fog. Temperatures could reach 40 on Tuesday. Three years ago, the City of Plymouth created a new position at City Hall designed to help foster and grow its business community. In this week's Business Matters, we are introducing you to the new person now serving as Plymouth's Economic Development Manager and learning how he sees his role in the city. The City of Plymouth is in a growth spurt. With 54,000 jobs, Plymouth is the fourth largest economy in the state and home to a wide range of businesses. Ben Landhauser steps into the role of Plymouth's economic development manager at a time when the city's med tech industry is especially strong. Large employers such as Medtronic and Smith's Medical are just a few of the 130 med tech or med tech supporting companies with a presence in Plymouth. In an interview with CCX News, Landhauser, who comes from the city of Victoria, told us what attracted him to this job. I think a lot of what is interesting about Plymouth is just their proximity in the metro. Uh, certainly from my past history, this is a much larger community than I've ever worked for before, so that intrigued me itself. Uh, but digging in a little bit deeper on kind of the background of what's made Plymouth Plymouth, just understanding fourth largest economy in the state, uh, certainly a lot of growth that's happened here, but the, just the strength of the business community. Um, certainly a big thing that I think attracted me uh, to Plymouth to start with. And as economic development uh, manager, what do you see as your top two priorities? What, what will your role be here in Plymouth? Sure, um, certainly because it is still a fairly new position for um, the organization. A lot of the 
intent behind it that I intend to still uphold and kind of carry uh, forward is seeing an emphasis placed on getting to know the business community a little bit better, um, being a more active participant and understanding what the needs are within the business community, whether it's new development, retention, recruitment, um, any of those um, kind of things that the city just wants to have a more active role in. Um, that's really where my emphasis is going to be here. And Plymouth uh, has a, a, a large med tech uh, business community. Do they you do. see yourself uh, establishing relationships with them? Is it about bringing more companies in like that or sustaining the ones that are currently here? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, certainly, I will be digging into that um, with Plymouth being uh, a med tech hub, so to speak. Uh, certainly trying to understand what is going on with that field that's made uh, Plymouth a more natural spot for those businesses to start locating. Uh, whether it's looking to continue to expand, understanding are there related businesses that help to support them that could also be located here in Plymouth. Uh, getting to know kind of the ins and outs of all those different factors, that's what I'll be looking at. Landhauser comes to Plymouth after the city's first economic development manager, Danette Parr, left to work for the city of St. Paul. Still ahead, one hot dog of a vehicle pulls into Brooklyn Park. But first, a hot start carries benailed St. Margaret's in a boys basketball matchup against Wyzetta. John Jacobson has the highlights coming up next. I'm John Jacobson with sports. The Benilde St. Margaret's boys basketball team has played a tough non-conference schedule so far with games against ranked teams Edina, De La Salle, and Brooklyn Center, to name three. The Red Knights were at home Saturday to face a white center team that was riding a five-game winning streak. But the Red Knights come out fast. Benilde's Liam Ford turns into the lane, scores, and is fouled here as the Red Knights grab a big early lead. A couple of minutes later, it's Riley Miller with a long three-pointer on his way to a 17-point game, and it's 21-3 Benilde. Great entry pass from Gabe Alata to Nick Peterson for two more, and Benilde extends its first half lead to 28 points. Just before halftime, Ford with a long pass ahead to Joe Dunn, who beats the buzzer with a layup. Benilde takes a 53-27 lead in a halftime. Dunn scores 18 in the game. Coach Brian Schnettler's Wyzetta team is much more competitive in the second half. Jacob Benega with a three here. He's one of three Trojans players to score in double figures. But Benilde maintains its lead throughout. Ford leads all players in scoring with 26 points. Benilde wins this one 84-61. In girls basketball, Maple Grove's losses have come against Wyzetta, Park Center, and St. Michael Albertville, all of whom are or have been ranked in the top 10 in Class 4A. Crimson looked to improve their conference record to 4-1 and one as they visited Armstrong. Masengo Matangas missed the Falcons' first seven games of the year with an injury. She's now back. Scored an early two points. And then Alyssa Hansen with a baseline jumper. Armstrong within three of 13-10. to 10. Most of the game, though, it's Maple Grove. Autumn Malinar with an offensive rebound scores. And it's a 23-12 Crimson lead. Katrina Tice shovels a pass into the lane to Abby Schulte, who scores. Maple Grove will take a 31-14 lead into halftime. They didn't score early in the second half, but then the Crimson get their offense going again. Malinar hitting for three. She scored 24 in the game, 17 after halftime. Schulte will get a steal here. She'll go in for two more, eight points for the sophomore guard on the night. Tice added 12 points from Maple Grove. Crimson improved to eight and three on the season. They beat Armstrong 58 to 30. The MG GOA gymnastics meet annually brings together some of the state's best teams in class A and AA. Four local teams were part of this year's field too. Park Center High School the site Saturday for the 16 team event. Teams are split into two divisions, and Breck is in Division Two. Mustang Sailor Hawkins scores an 8.75 to finish second on the balance beam. She won the floor exercise in vault and also won the all-around title in Division Two. Cheney New, the defending state class AA champion in the floor exercise. Champlin Park gymnast scored a 9.4 for this routine, placed fifth overall, though later won the vault. Maple Grove has the highest finish among local teams in Division One. Crimson senior Nadia Abbott turns in the best score for her team on the uneven bar. She placed third in the beam. Park Center's Anna Kali, the Pirates' top all-rounder, 
scored an 8.375 on the bars and later scores a 9.4 on the beam, placing fifth. Division one team winner is Detroit Lakes. Two Lakers placed on the top four on the balance beam, including Jackson Haig, who scored with a 9.45. Near the final results, Detroit Lakes, the Division I winner with a score of 148.9. Lakeville North is second, one point ahead of Lakeville South. Maple Grove is fourth at 144.025 with Champlain Park sixth and Park Center eighth. Breck wins the Division II meet, scoring 134.075. North St. Paul is second and Coon Rapids third. Many of the state's top Nordic skiers had a chance to test out the site of the state meet. They traveled north to Bawabek and Giants Ridge over the weekend. This is the huge Misabi Invitational. And Forest Lake wins the boys title, edging out Stillwater and Mounds Park Academy. Locally, Hopkins is the top team, placing 18th with Wyzetta 20th and Maple Grove 25th. In the girls meet, Stillwater seven points better than runner-up Forest Lake. Duluth East is third and Ely fourth. Wyzetta places 11th, Hopkins 20th, and Maple Grove 33rd. Closer to home at Worth Park, Armstrong was one of the host teams at the Loppet Invitational. Falcons girls, state runner-up last season, placed third behind Highland Park and Eastview. May Barnes of the Falcons won the classic race. Armstrong's boys finished second, 10 points behind winner St. Paul Highland Park. And that is it for sports. We're back with more in a moment. And finally, rather than worrying about miles per gallon, here's a vehicle that focuses on smiles per mile. Photojournalist Dustin Scholl stopped by the Brooklyn Park High V where an American icon on wheels rolled into town. Oh, I wish I were an Oscar Now, today's a little cold, so the Wienermobile's a chili dog. But in the summer, when it's uh, nice and sunny out, we like to go suns out, buns out, and open up our bun roof up there. So the Wienermobile is 27 feet long, which of course equates to 50 hot dogs long. We have six seats in the Wienermobile. All of them are ketchup and mustard colored with the Wienermobile logo embroidered on them. If you were to be sitting in this seat, you'd be riding shot bun. <laughs> but we wouldn't go anywhere until you first put on your meat belt. How is it for mileage? You know, we focus a lot more on smiles per mile than miles oh, per yeah. gallon. <laughs> is this a chance encounter or did you come out to see the Wienermobile today? Oh, uh, well, this is, I uh, purposely came out to see uh, the mobile. Let but, me ask you uh, why. Oh, because I was so interested in it. So how long have you waited to see this automotive legend in person? Since I was born. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. I didn't come true the first time I've seen it. Yeah. And being at the helm of the Wienermobile is a select gig. We learned that more people have launched into outer space than have driven the Wienermobile. That's all the news for us. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. We will see you back here on Tuesday starting at 4 o'clock.